Hi, my name is Kay Freeman. I'm an artist and I'm based in downtown Los Angeles uh, in California. I was born in Hong Kong and raised in Tokyo, Japan. I'm bilingual and my father was from Birmingham in the UK and my mother was from Sydney, Australia. I attended Japanese school for my first eight years and then international school. Being immersed in Japanese culture from such an early age has had a massive impact on who I have been and who I've become. I thought in Japanese when I was in child, when I was a child and I dreamt in Japanese. Um, what I do as an artist is I paint and I draw and I dance around and I also perform. I make backdrops and short backdrops of the um, performances and I also make short films. Uh, the performances and short films are generally they're part of a collaboration that I do with another artist. Her name is Amy Caps. She's a really brilliant um, Los Angeles based performance artist and together we have a uh, YouTube channel called Hibiscus TV and we um, recently performed at Building Bridges in Santa Monica and prior to that uh, also this year we performed with Heidi Duckler at the State Park down there near Chinatown. Um, the second question, how does this impact? Oh yeah, okay, so growing up I read a lot of manga comic books, they're very thick Japanese um, printed comic books and um, just the smell of them and the texture of them and the they came out once a month and the front page was always uh, an explosion of color and I followed all the characters and I was really kind of absorbed in that manga culture from a very early age from probably like it was the mid 60s that I started when I first started reading them right through the 70s until I actually moved away from Japan I grew up watching Japanese animation um, which West is really not that familiar with um, it was prior to the Miyazaki boom and there was still like some really incredible animation uh, characters that were very complex like they could look very evil but they're actually very kind a lot of spirits animation about spirits and magical beings and um, it was really quite wonderful and so also looking at um, I got to look at a lot of art in Japanese museums and temples and it's given me a distinctly different view of the art world um, which is not Eurocentric and the colors of the seasons of Japan and calligraphy, which I studied at school, um, have impacted my compositions, themes, and palette. Because of the Japanese and Chinese mythologies and compositions I was in, immersed in, I now create compositions that follow the landscape and format of um, the viewer as the vanishing point viewing the image rather than a specific point within the picture being the vanishing point. So in Western or European art, you see a landscape and the vanishing point is like, you know, up in the mountains or it's a crow or it's somewhere in the painting. Whereas in um, Asian landscapes, generally the vanishing point is the viewer so that as you move along through the landscape, it all comes back to you. And so I've created these large scape, large uh, they're, they're abstract figurative paint drawings they're very big that are in that vein of like as you move along you see stuff that comes out at you rather than there being one central point um, also my use of color is influenced by the seasonal referencing that's in all the Japanese designs and that goes not just with the seasons of the year, but also with seasons in life, so that there are different colors that people, that represent different age groups. Um, and for women in particular, this is quite a strict um, protocol that influences the colors that women wear at different stages of their life. Uh, also, um, 
the concept of wabi sabi which is honoring the imperfect and as something that's um a, like something that's really old or traditional and infusing that with something very contemporary also so i might have you know a calligraphic kind of flourish or movement in my work but do it with a fluorescent pink for example or use fluorescent colors in a traditional painting of flowers or something like that putting it really simplistically uh, my biggest influences uh, when i was younger uh, like i said were those japanese manga and also hokusai um, Michelangelo I was a big Michelangelo fan and when I was in about seventh grade or eighth grade I started at the international school and I went so I looked at a lot of picture books because I couldn't read English I was learning to read and write English um, at that age I was completely fluent in Japanese and um, so I looked at I you know we had library hours so I would go to the library and I'd get all the picture books and look at all the pictures but my favorite was Diane Arbus and the day I discovered Diane Arbus, I think my whole world just cracked open to a whole new dimension and my little brain was just, you know, exploding with ideas. And then, of course, I found Dali, at which point I just thought the world had turned into this incredible, unbelievable potential for my brain to then follow through with my own ideas. Um, as I got older, I became obsessed with Hieronymus Bosch because I could see that you know, Bosch was using or was commissioned to use imagery by the Catholic Church because people were illiterate. So using the images, he communicated with people. And I really, that really appealed to me of finding a way of communicating an idea through imagery. And of course, Frida Kahlo, who is, I just think, so, you know, she's become this icon, but it's really important to remember that she was a really brilliant artist and to look at her paintings now. And um, I had scoliosis myself. I had a spinal issue and I had to wear a brace. And so that painting of her wearing the brace, just that was like, oh, that's what you can paint. You can paint your truth. You can paint your life and other people will respond to it and feel kind of like, oh, that's me. I'm okay, you know, there's, it's a human condition. And in my older years, I've been influenced by people like Louise Bourgeois, who just, again, gives you that permission to go out there and just go completely bonkers with uh, what you what you truly believe in. Uh, Sally Gabori is a really underrated, I just wish the whole world knew about Sally Gabori. Um, the first time I stood in front of one of her paintings, I was just my heart began thumping and I almost hyperventilated the power within her work. She's an Australian Aboriginal artist, began working in her 80s, really hit her stride in her 90s, and unfortunately she has passed away. Um, she makes Rothko look like an amateur. I mean, she's phenomenal. And then, um, so I'll... I'll yeah, she's, she really inspired me, actually, really, really inspired me. And then um, a couple of other artists that I've, all my life, I've kind of, well, not all my life, but, you know, in my adult life, I've followed and been inspired by is William Kentridge from South Africa and Kara Walker, the American artist who um, does, her work is, it was really eye-opening for me. And when I first arrived in um, the U.S., I was exposed to a whole lot of her art as well and it really, really, really beautiful. Um, right now I'm focusing on drawings that vary in size from very small to about 14 feet long. They're huge. Um, I'm capturing the essence of decomposition and transformation to the ether and other realms and how that, um, how in a sense of connectivity within us all and we all just become stardust in the end. Um, the biggest challenge I have as an artist is how figuring out how to pay my bills, um, being okay with rejection, regular rejection, and learning to never compare myself with others in a positive or negative way. I'm also my own biggest, harshest critic, but I'm also my own biggest cheerleader. I think the two things I've kind of really had to balance out. Uh, the advice I would give my younger self is you are much more talented than you realize you are. You are, in fact, amazing. Um, 
have I ever tried any unconventional techniques? Uh, yeah, I went through a stage of using shellac, which is a varnish made out of moth wings, mixed with uh, methylated spirits. So I used this shellac and I put tinter in it as um, a foundation for some portraits that I did about dementia. And it looked really good and it worked really well. And um, the trouble with that is it's pretty toxic, so I didn't do it for too long. Uh, the music I listen to in the background, I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, really good ones, Laura Richards, true, uh, Real Crime Profile. Um, and of course, what are the red handed? They're, they're great. And generally in the afternoon, I switch to some really, like my favorite music, which is, involves a lot of dance music, uh, Sia, you know, some sort of like anthem type stuff. It can go off particularly at sunset. And then sometimes I listen to ragas or meditation music if I really need to just, you know, buckle down and focus and be in a certain realm. Uh, the best reaction someone has had to my work is I was in a gallery and um, these two ladies were standing in front of my painting and one of them turned to the other and said, this is the most incredible painting I've ever seen in my life. And I was just standing there and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. And then also I did a really large painting for the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster, California. It was 29 feet long. And I would stand there and a lot of children came through and um, the, they'd come around the corner and just seeing their faces light up with this absolute awe and joy, you know, that was uh, that was, <laughs> was pretty good. I liked that a lot. Um, what do I hope that people take away from my artwork? A uh, sense of, um, I just hope that people, when they look at my work, are kind of fulfilled with the mystery of life. It's mysterious. It doesn't give you all the answers, but that's the beauty and that's the joy. Um, it's like music, you know, and you can go back to it again and again like an old friend and then you might keep finding new new fractals and new things in it that you didn't see, see before and, and bring you a new sense of comfort and joy and appreciation of life. And I think that's about it. So thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>